Bonjour and good morning. I am Brigadier General John Lubis, the Deputy Commanding General of the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault. I would like to begin by welcoming our distinguished guests and visitors, and especially our World War II veterans, William Parker, Jack Hamlin, Al Chatwin, and the son of one of the heroes of this battle, Robert Wright Jr. You honor us with your presence. Our World War II veterans are the reasons we are here and we forever strive to live up to their example. Many of you know the story of this battle, but I will share a short history of what occurred here and its significance. In the early morning hours of June 6, 1944, the 501st Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 101st Airborne Division parachuted into Drop Zone D, the division's most southern drop zone. The division's mission was to enable the passage of 4th Infantry Division following their amphibious assault on Utah Beach. Following his parachute jump, Robert E. Wright immediately noticed the church steeple and headed towards it. He found himself here at the, cir at the church of St. Combe and St. Damien. The 19-year-old medic removed a Red Cross flag from his pack and pinned it to the door of the church to identify it as an aid station and neutral ground. At approximately the same time, 20-year-old medic Kenneth Moore was approaching the village from the opposite direction. Kenneth moved towards the church with two soldiers who were injured in the jump. Once Kenneth reached the church, the two medics immediately began treating the initial casualties. The two then took turns retrieving the wounded from the surrounding area using a farm cart and repeatedly risked their lives to rescue the wounded. These casualties were not limited to just Americans. Robert and Kenneth also provided aid to German soldiers and the village's citizens. Before long, the church was packed with casualties. For the next three days, Robert and Kenneth treated wounds that far exceeded their level of medical training. It's important to remember that they were medics, not surgeons or doctors. Robert had only received three months of medical training, and Kenneth had only received three weeks. On the evening of 6 June, an American officer entered the church and told Robert and Kenneth that the Germans had broken through the U.S. lines and the U.S. forces were being forced to withdraw from the town. The two medics bravely decided to stay with the casualties to continue to provide life-saving care. By the end of the 6th of June, approximately 80 men, among them Americans, Germans, and French, were under the care of Robert and Kenneth within the church. Sometime after the withdrawal of the American paratroopers, a German machine gunner threw open the door of the church. After a long, intense moment of silence, instead of opening fire on his enemy, the German soldier stepped back, made a sign of the cross, and left the church. This was perhaps an act of humanity during the horrors of this battle. American troops recaptured Ongaville on the afternoon of 7 June after a final day of fierce fighting. Robert and Kenneth had maintained the aid station throughout the entire battle and only departed the church when Ongaville was finally liberated. Their actions were both selfless and heroic. The memorial commemorating this battle is marked with two flags, one French and one American. Unlike many memorials from June of 1944, the memorial does not include a long list of those killed. It instead celebrates lives saved. The inscription reads, in honor and in, re and in recognition of Robert E. Wright, Kenneth J. Moore, Medics, 2nd Battalion, 501st Parachute Infantry Regiment, 101st Airborne Division, for humane and life-saving care rendered to 80 combatants and a child in this church in June 1944. As fewer and fewer World War II veterans are able to make the trip to Normandy, and there are fewer Normans of the same area, it is our responsibility to ensure these stories and their sacrifices are never forgotten. We would not be here today without the incredible efforts of so many local citizens and community leaders who dedicate their time, energy, and personal resources to ensure that our collective history is preserved. Please join me in a round of applause for all those who continue to safeguard our history so that we may always remember. Angeville Alplan will always have a special heart, a special place in the hearts of the Screaming Eagles, as will the people of this part of France. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. 
your safe holding association to its preservation and upkeep. To the tournaments of war in one sector or another of all lands. Peace, freedom, serenity, and community living.